Hello, in this game engine setup video, we're going to be implementing the game loop. The game loop will be what is going to be run in our main entry point, our main method, and it's what's going to handle basically our scenes, everything. It's just going to bring all of our components together. So the state machine, any other sort of asset managers or any sort of managers that we've created will be brought together in the game loop and that will be usable in all of the different states that we create in future videos. So first of all, we want to create a new file. We need a header and a CPP file. Just do this in the same way that you normally would for your ID or your text editor. And I'm going to call this game, a game loop, just game, because this is a lot of the time in games or like game development, you'll have some sort of game class and this is what this is, and you'll handle the game loop as well. Create in the header file, let's get rid of the contents inside here. Put hash pragma once. So I'm going to close this so we've got a bit more real estate to work with. And do hash include memory. We'll explain the use of all of these as we need them. We're going to have one for string, We're going to have another one for SFML graphics.hpp and we're going to do include state machine that we created in a previous video do hash include asset manager that we created in a previous video and the same for the input manager that we also created in a previous video if you create any other sort of manager you can easily add it when you'll see that we'll have a struct for the game data that will have all of these three things in there you'll easily be able to add more managers if you create something else later on which will be fantastic so we're going to do namespace sonar as usual we're going to have a struct called game data this will be accessible via all of the classes and this is going to have an instance of the state machine called machine we're going to have an sf render window called window which will be well the render window of our application we're going to have an asset manager called assets we're going to have an input manager called input and now what we want to do is first of all I'm going to add some empty lines so it can easily scroll up and down so after the struct we need to do type def std shared pointer and the type is going to be of game data and this is going to be game data ref so this is actually what we would be using when accessing any of these now we're going to create a game class and this needs a semicolon here we need to have a public method which will have a constructor the constructor will take a few parameters the first will be the width which is the width of our screen and the height of our screen and then a string which is the name of our application that will appear at the top over here so string title now we're going to have some private variables first is going to be a constant float dt which is going to be assigned to 1.0f divided by 60.0f so this is going to be our frame rate or what we how many times we want to update per second and we want to do it 60 times per second we're going to have a clock which is required for handling the frame rate we're going to have a game data ref instance called data equals to std make shared and it's going to inside here it's going to be game data and there's no arguments so this is what we would actually use in the different states 
to access all of these different pieces of game data. So now I'm going to have a method called void run, which will be called when we simply put start our game. So save that. Now what you want to do is go to the CPP file. And in there, we can get rid of all of these comments. And we need a namespace. So namespace sonar. We need the constructor. So game colon colon game. And we need to put the various parameters inside here. So int width int height and std string title. Now we need to just do underscore data window. So this is the render window dot create because it's not created yet. For the video mode, we do SF video mode and it takes two simple parameters, the width and the height. And for the title, we're going to simply pass in title. We're going to provide a couple more parameters. First is going to be SF style close and we're going to all that with sf style title bar so that just means we'll have a close and a title bar on our window some basics that you generally want this method is what's going to be called from within our main.cpp that's the only call that we're going to do in there and from here we will do this run then our application, our game, will start running in all its glory. And now let's implement the run method. So void game colon colon run. Okay, we need a few parameters. First is going to be a float, new time, frame time, and the interpolation. All of this will become clear why we need them in a second when we implement them. We need a float current time equals this. So we're accessing the clock. We're getting the elapsed time to as seconds. So this is the amount of time that has occurred since well the clock started. We're gonna do float accumulator. Sign this the value of 0, 0.0f. And let me put some empty lines here so I can easily just scroll up and down. And now we're going to do a while loop. So while this underscore data window dot is is open and data is underscore like so. So while the window is open, we're going, going to constantly be running this loop. If you switch back a few videos and watch when we actually set up our project on Windows and Mac, doesn't matter which one, then we implemented some code within the main file. You will remember that we had a while loop that was running while the window is open. We're essentially bringing that code over now into a more structured form for our game. So in here, we're going to do this underscore data machine so this is a state machine dot process state changes so the first thing that we want to do at the start in this loop is process any changes that have occurred so if we're switching a state if we're pausing a state that sort of stuff we're going to get the new time which is going to be equal to this underscore clock dot get elapsed time dot as seconds like so we need to get the difference between the new time and the current time, which is the frame time, how long it took between frames. So frame time equals new time. And we need to do this to be able to handle any differences in frame time, because you might not always get the same frame time. You might get a frame rate that differs, but we need to be able to handle that for smooth gameplay. So I'm going to just do a quick check if frame time is greater than 0.25 f then we're just going to assign frame time to 0.25 f so we're just restricting it so it doesn't go too high we're going to get the current time and that's now going to be equal to the new time 
and the accumulator will be plus equal to the frame time so it's just a total of all the frame times so while the accumulator is greater than or equal to dt which is delta what we want to do is do this underscore data machine dot get active state handle input like so and we're going to do this underscore data machine dot get active state handle input and we need to just do accumulator minus equals dt so obviously we need to make sure that we are handling any input and should be update sorry update and we need to pass in the parameter dt so the update can factor that in and there's something about it it doesn't like so too many arguments to function call of update okay so if we go to the machine and the update method so state machine get active state so in state ah update should be should have a float of dt my bad if you're watching this video and you didn't add it or like like me you didn't add it. if you noticed it fantastic if you didn't just go back and add it like so so now that that is done outside of the while loop you need to do interpolation equals accumulator divide by dt this underscore data machine dot get active state and we are now drawing it and for the delta time we're going to pass in the interpolation that we've been that we've calculated and that is it so now we have a working game loop so what we need to do now is actually go to our main so if we go to the main right here we need to do hash include game.hpp and before this we just need to put sonar colon colon game and specify some width and height value so 800 by 600 and we're going to do put sfml starter save that if we run it let's see if we get any errors no errors fantastic and let's see what we get okay we crashes and I know exactly why it crashes if we go to our game right here after we create our window we need to add a state to the machine because if there's no state it can't do anything this could be your splash state your menu state the first state that the game shows and we're gonna leave that for the next video when we actually start implementing states so stay tuned for that and as usual thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day